Remember, there was a ceasefire on October 6th that Hamas broke by their barbaric uh, assault on peaceful civilians and their kidnapping, their killing, their beheading, their terrible, inhumane uh, savagery. There was a ceasefire. It did not hold because Hamas chose to break it. calling for a ceasefire now do not understand Hamas. That is not possible. It would be such a gift to Hamas because they would spend whatever time there was a ceasefire in effect rebuilding their uh, armaments, you know, creating stronger positions to be able to fend off uh, an eventual um, assault by the Israelis. So A ceasefire done prematurely benefits uh, those who do not abide by any laws, by any rules, by any human you know, character value about the value of life. So that was not, it was much too premature. Now I think the pauses should be considered. Israel is under pressure by the United States to implement a humanitarian pause in its conflict against Hamas. It comes as Palestinian officials reveal one child is killed in Gaza every 10 minutes. As crushing as Israel's airstrikes targeting Hamas are militarily, they've also become politically counterproductive. A crippling consequence, civilians, thousands of them, have been killed. Israel under U.S. pressure for a humanitarian pause. On the diplomatic front, we are working around the clock to provide the IDF with international maneuvering room for continued military activity. Netanyahu's plan to destroy Hamas is under threat. Time may be running out. The two clocks, one of how long will it take the IDF to finish what they see as their target, and second, how longer the international community, and specifically the US, would tolerate the continuation of this ground offensive, those, are two, uh, those two are not in sync. I am afraid that the United States will succeed in stopping us from completing the work. Both Ben Yashai and Bergman are respected veteran Israeli journalists. Both have been taken by the IDF to the front line in Gaza. None of the strategic goals of this operation uh, has been achieved. Hamas are not going out of the tunnels. According to the IDF, Hamas operatives killed, rockets captured, launch sites discovered. But according to Ben Yashai, at a pace that both Netanyahu and Biden can stomach. They go very slowly because of two things. First of all, because, because of the Americans. 
to be to be honest and secondly because of the safety of the, of the soldiers Bergman says he's asked IDF officers if they can rout Hamas from its tunnels. When you ask them, do you think that you can take out the whole of subterrain bunkers? They say, no, there's no way. Meanwhile, Hamas's regular rocket salvos into Israel reinforce their bunker resilience is working, reminding Israelis of their vulnerability to US politics. This demand by the United States to make a humanitarian pause hits the, the deepest emotions of the Israelis. The Prime Minister and other speakers for the government and the military need to be by far more transparent um, and direct with Israeli public. I think that they are creating expectations that will not be fulfilled. A month into the war, Israel appears weakened by its own strength. Hamas, empowered by its tunnels, easily able to weaponize the high civilian death toll. Their officials claim that at least one child is killed every 10 minutes. A shocking statistic that may buy them enough time to fight another day.